Thank you. So I'm Brian Meeker from Deloitte. I'm a partner. I've uh, been with Deloitte for uh, uh, 20 years now. And I'm going to spend the next uh, few minutes just talking about how to do uh, large-scale transformations around product development and PLM and uh, you know, how you can maximize the benefits that you get from uh, those types of uh, transformation. Okay, so um, before I get started, some of you may not know uh, Deloitte, so I'm just going to take a few minutes to uh, describe what we do and how we do it. So uh, Deloitte is the largest professional services for firm in, in, the, uh, in the world, and uh, we serve the Fortune uh, Global 500, uh, about 80% of that. And we also um, practice in about all of the major uh, markets around the world. From an industry sector perspective, uh, we hit all the major sectors um, that all of you are, are here from today. Um, I particularly focus on aerospace and defense, automotive and industrial products, but um, my fellow colleagues uh, practice across all those other industry sectors uh, as well. Okay, so um, at Deloitte, one of the things that we're known for is helping organizations transform around their largest, most complex problems. And in order to do that, we bring strategy, we bring operations improvement, we bring um, organizational change, and we also um, do large-scale technology programs. And what makes us successful is we do all of that on individual programs. And you can see that um, the, the analyst community, many of whom are here today, um, th this is how they see us in, um, in our capabilities as we compare against our, our peer group. When we, uh, when we created our uh, product development and uh, PLM practice, uh, we, we brought that same philosophy and built uh, the same type of capabilities to help serve all of you. And so we built a very broad and deep practice. Um, the fundamentals kind of cross the, the strategy pillar, technology, operations improvement, and uh, organization. And so I'm gonna spend just a few seconds talking about our practice uh, in each one of those areas. Uh, from a strategy perspective, um, we help companies define their innovation strategy, um, their R&D strategy. Um, from a PLM perspective, uh, don't think of PLM as the technology, think of it as people, process, and technology. We help organizations create their overall roadmap and business case uh, for PLM and what that's going to do to the organization and what impacts it's going to uh, have on the organization. We also do other things, though. We, we help organizations with value engineering, which is helping them take um, significant cost out of their um, product platforms. And then we also um, have a very big practice around analytics and driving program analytics um, to measure success across the strategy um, that we're helping them implement. From an operation standpoint, um, one of the things that we, we focus on is applying uh, lean to complex product development and engineering uh, programs. So I started my career uh, 20 years ago at Deloitte focusing on lean manufacturing. And I spent a, a lot of time out on the shop floor. And what I saw was that a lot of the, the challenges out on the shop floor actually, um, the root cause started in engineering because there wasn't really designed for manufacturability. And so um, about five or six years into my career, I started focusing on how to apply lean concepts to complex engineering environments to help uh, fix what was happening out on the shop floor and also to make engineering much more efficient, much more effective. Um, through that, we then started doing lots of, over the next decade, lots of uh, large scale transformations of engineering processes. And um, what we did about five years ago was we took those um, programs that we had done across all of our clients and we took a, a real hard look at what was common and what was unique. And what we found was that across all the processes, about 80% of the processes were common across all of our clients. So we, we took those processes and we created, at the bottom there you see PLM processes. We created something we call PLM process print. And it is, um, if you think of all of the major um, processes from ideation all the way through aftermarket and service from a product perspective, we have all of the product development processes defined. And it's mapped to out of the box PLM functionality. So it makes it um, very easy for us to come into clients and, and have something to work with. And it has embedded in it all the lean practices. It has all of the um, engineering capabilities. It has um, the uh, leading practices embedded within these uh, process models. And what I'm gonna talk about a little bit later is how we then took that and we've pre-configured Anovia 
um, 2014X with those processes. So it's the first time something of that scale has been done across all of those process areas. And those processes cover everything, like I said, from ideation, um, stage gate, um, the requirements management systems engineering, enterprise bomb management, enterprise configuration management, um, change control, you know, all of those types of uh, core processes, including design, design for X, um, all included in those out of the box uh, process models. Um, from a technology standpoint, as I mentioned, we do um, core PLM technology implementations, very similar to what you know, traditionally was done in PLM. Um, I'm gonna talk about our pre-configured PLM solution about um, how we took those process models and created that uh, within Anovia 2014X. Um, we also do a lot of PLM data migration. Um, many of you probably know Deloitte for large scale SAP and Oracle implementation, so we have really deep capabilities to do massive data migration and legacy system uh, integration, both with PLM and with uh, legacy systems. Okay, so from an organization standpoint, this is also very critical. So we're gonna be changing the processes, we're implementing the technology, but we have to change the talent model, the roles and responsibilities, and all of those other capabilities that allow people to actually do their work in a different way in the future, because that's how you get the efficiency gains. If we change the processes and we change the technology, but people don't change their behaviors, there's no benefit in that. So we spend a lot of energy and we have, um, our, we have a practice inside of Deloitte called human capital and their sole responsibility on projects is to help change the behaviors, um, but it goes beyond that. We change the talent model, the recruiting model, the roles and responsibilities to really map to what the new processes and technology are gonna look like. Okay, so um, most of you probably face a lot of these issues in, in your organization. So year over year, declining R&D budgets, you're typically short on engineering capacity, it's hard to find engineers to, um, to hire. Um, it, it, right now there's the global shortage of engineers. Um, engineering complexity is getting much more complex um, with the um, software and electronics coming into what was traditionally mechanical world. Um, multiple systems, um, the under, underlying infrastructure within product development and engineering is one of the last untouched areas within the IT infrastructure, so it's very difficult to get at the source data and make good decisions. And then the ever-changing, shifting timeframes that happen within organizations, both within your organization across programs, with your customers and their shifting timeframes, and with your supplier. So that all of those things make it very difficult. So um, what, are the, what are the visible issues that come out of those, and, and what do you typically see at the end of your programs? Lots of times, those issues and, and having poor processes end up driving you know, your programs to be late to market, over budget, um, subpar delivery, and you know, typically um, not very good return on investment. Uh, but that's what you see after the fact. It would be much better to fix the issues that are happening underneath it so you could resolve them and, and not encounter those. So what we did was we developed a number of tools uh, years ago that, to help really get into the details and, and understand the real complexity. What are the root cause drivers of what these issues are? And so um, these, analytical tools that we have help us get to that in a very short period of time. Usually in about six to 12 weeks, we can come in and understand even the most complex engineering programs that um, use thousands of, uh, of engineers to deliver. I'm gonna give you a, a quick example of what one of those looks like. So, you know, traditionally, um, what we used to do and probably what a lot of you do is, you know, you, if you're looking at, you know, how do I improve my engineering efficiency, you get a group of your experts together, you up on a conference room wall, you draw the process out and you try to figure out, you know, what's the value stream look like and where can I take time out of that value stream. Um, unfortunately, work doesn't get done in that nice swim lane that you see up there, right? It never happens that way. It's a chaotic mess. And so what we did was we had to figure out a way to show that um, chaos and really understand what were the root cause drivers that were causing those issues. And so with that, we abandoned the, the traditional value stream mapping model, and we went with um, a new tool that we developed. Um, this was, it's not new anymore. We've had this for uh, many years now. But uh, what it is, is we take those swim lanes, so the people who actually do the work, we put them around the outside of the circle. So those are actual people. And by the way, this is a value stream map that we just finished for a client two weeks ago, so this is a real live example. Um, so you also see around each person all of the systems that they're using to do their work and you wonder why it's hard to get work done, you have to jump in and out of all those different systems and, and share drives to get information. It makes it very, very difficult. Each line represents one of the steps in a process 
and you can see that they're going back and forth because that's what happens in reality, right? People are doing their work and they're cycling through that, trying to get the right information, make decisions and whatnot. And that's a good depiction of what actually is happening in, in most engineering environments. But if you apply the lean engineering principles and best practices um, that, that we help our clients um, accomplish, you can get rid of all of that. And what you'll see is what that can look like. Still, it's a complex product. It's still, you can see that it's a, um, there's still a lot of blue there, but um, we got rid of a lot of the systems. And in fact, we actually got rid of a lot of the actual work as well. So systems were reduced by 77%, handoffs reduced by 80%, cycle time reduced by 55%. So there's your time to market, 55% re reduction in cycle time. And effort time, this is real engineering capacity, freeing up 32% of engineering capacity to go work on other platforms or, or additional innovation. Okay, so um, what, does that all, what does that all mean? So you have non-value activities that are in, in, embedded in there. You have all those legacy systems with information that's hard to get to, causing unnecessary churn. That all drives hard dollar benefits. So when you're trying to get to a, a business case and roadmap, you know, these are the things that you need to be able to identify and get to what's really happening and be able to convince the organization that you understand what's really happening. And that's, that's what's going to get your business case approved and also drive a, a strategy for how you can go implement. So that's typically the, the assess stage. You know, it takes, like I said, um, anywhere from six to 12 weeks based on the size of the organization. Um, I'm going to spend just a few seconds talking about the pre-configured solution and what we've done. And there's really no good way to show what happens in an implementation, but for those of you who've been through an implementation, this is what it often feels like. Things are flying at you very quickly. You're going through the tunnel of um, chaos, and it's hard to um, understand all the issues that are going to be impacting your program. So one of the things that we've tried to do is, again, we took those predefined uh, process models, and we've embedded them within uh, 2014X to create a, a fully pre-configured solution. So imagine a world where if you had a greenfield environment that you need to stand up, you could literally have full processes, you load your users in. If you didn't have data, you could be up and running very quickly. That's how this, um, this solution is actually built. We don't charge for it, so these are just accelerators that help us implement. Um, so there's nothing that you buy from Deloitte as it, as it relates to this pre-configured solution. They're just accelerators that we help um, make implementations go faster and uh, reduce the risk in, in big implementations, which, uh, which I show here. Okay, so you know, typically what we get out of using this type of an approach can be very, very significant in the savings that you can get and, um, and also the, the, the risk and, and the cost going out of the program. Now the really interesting thing is, is that when we've done this, 80%, 80-85% of the processes you can use out of the box. Let's face it, engineering change is an engineering change process. There isn't something that you should be doing that's all that unique. And if you, if you saw what, what we have in our process model, most organizations say, that'll work for us. It's exactly, it's a lean process, CM2 compliant, and it maps directly to out-of-the-box functionality. Why would we not use that? So 80, 85% of what we've built will work for you. It allows us to really focus on what's the 15 to 20% that makes you unique that gives you the competitive advantage. So that's where we focus our energy, not on the stuff that doesn't matter. And by the way, that other stuff that we've already pre-configured, it's already best practice. This is the stuff that's really unique to your organization. This is where you want your experts that are coming in from the outside to focus on. And so that's what we do. Um, now, it's not vaporware, so I have to show you the real live stuff, right? So um, at the bottom are our process models. At the top is 2014X. And you can see that um, we've highlighted some areas where we're actually showing in the black box um, down below in the process, what's happening up above is actually 2014X that's executing that um, actual process step. So this is um, real live uh, capability um, that allows us to um, you know, actually get this stuff in your environment. And imagine a day that when you start your implementation on day one of your design, we could have two screens, one screen with the process and one screen with 2014X running and they're in, in connection with each other. And if, we're, if we need to tweak the process, that night we can go tweak the configuration and bring it back the next day and show you what that looks like, right? So it rapid results in terms of you know, how you can go through an implementation. We wrap around that a bunch of tools and, and data model, use cases, test cases, training. Uh, we also have um, a pre, pre sorry, a pre-configured uh, connector to SAP as well. 
So it's a very robust tool. I'd be happy to um, talk to anybody uh, more about that. So when we use that, um, just kind of you know, showing again what that will do, you can see the typical results that we get when we you know, use these types of uh, capabilities with our clients. So with that, um, I think, you know, in closing, our, our, our success is really contingent upon how well we make you successful. And uh, we work very hard with our clients to collaborate with them and make sure that um, we're delivering the promise of the business uh, value that was defined up in the upfront strategy. And um, so much so that we're willing to put our fees at risk so um, many of our clients will put as much as 50% of our fees at risk to deliver the business case. So truly, your success is our success, and we're tied to the hip um, on delivery. And that's a big deal. Most companies won't do that. So uh, I think that makes us pretty unique. And you can see we're, we're making a lot of investments in, in our relationship with uh, Dassault Systems, as well as um, the capabilities that we want to bring to all of you. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you.